Good evening and welcome back to Frame of Midlife. It's Monday evening, we survived Monday. You know, work was not too bad, we were busy enough, no disasters as such, touch wood. Um, yeah, it's been not too bad. And, <coughs> excuse me, came home, poured myself a cup of tea, popped on YouTube and saw Mary Ann from Wallflowers UK talking about dehydrating. I was like, oh, I'll go and have a look. And it was actually just exactly what I needed because she was telling me exactly what I was telling myself when I first started dehydrating. When I first got the dehydrator, it saves you so much room in the freezer. It means that once you've gone through all your tins and everything, you've still got dehydrated. Um, she makes a lot of sense and she showed you some of her mishaps, which yeah, been there, done that. Thanks for that. I'm so glad somebody else does that. Um, so when I had finished watching the video, I was like, I'm just going to go and dehydrate more. And I don't know if I've told you before, I have two freezers. I have my chest freezer because I love a chest freezer. Um, but when we had to sell mum and dad's house, mum and dad had an upright freezer. So I brought that down as well because more freezer space has to be good. Um, I have one bag of carrots and one bag of peas left in there and they will be kept for sides and meals. I don't have any other veg. I have got so many batch cooked meals and I've also got raw meat that I need to can because I've got too much raw meat now. So that will be getting done just very shortly. Um, but yeah, no veggies to dehydrate. So what can I say? I'll just go and have another cup of tea, I think. Um, but the other thing that I had thought about earlier today was when I came home from lunch, for lunch, if you watched yesterday's video, you'll have seen my little evaporated milk sauce. And I love that sauce, I have to say. So I came back and we, we'd had roast chicken last night and so we'd done like, you know, half the chicken between the two of us. And I came back this afternoon for lunch and I was like, oh, there's still a bit of that sauce left. Oh, now if I just pick off the little bits of that chicken, you know, that when I cut it, I didn't get all the bits. So I had some chicken and sauce on a couple of slices of toast for lunch. And I thought, oh, look at me not wasting anything. And then that sort of expanded my thoughts a wee bit going, hmm, there was a whole thing that I had to change the way I shopped because of the waste that I was doing. Um, you know, intending to batch cook and not doing it because if I don't do it on specific days at the weekend, it just doesn't get done. Um, hence why I've got quite a lot of meat in the freezer now. That's basically the times that I didn't batch cook. So, but it was also then, today's thought was, hmm, what else can I stop wasting? You know, if there's bits of veggies left that are not are not used, like this here. I have carrots. These were supposed to be roasted last night with the chicken, but I didn't because I couldn't fit them all in the tray with roast potatoes. So I'm thinking, well, they're sitting there. I will be putting them in the air fryer tonight to roast them quickly, or I will be dehydrating them depending on what I decide to eat. Um, so, you know, normally that would have been like, oh my goodness, I've cooked too much or whatever. And I'd leave it for so long and it would go to waste. And I'm now thinking, no, we need to actually start looking at these little bits. Do you know, like also on my chopping board, I have the half onion because I only needed half an onion for the sauce last night. So onions and carrots will be getting used. They'll either be getting dehydrated or they will be getting roasted. Can't quite decide yet. See, can you see the wee wheels turning? Not quite sure. Um, but yeah, little things like that, just little bits, whereas normally you would just throw it out, like that sauce that I had left last night. There wasn't very much. It certainly wasn't enough for dinner. It was just the wee tail end in the pan. But it was really good for lunch. So that has to be done. And, you know, just using it with a couple of slices of bread. It didn't need rice. It didn't need veggies as such. So we did that and I think because we're literally sitting, waiting on Thursday to see what's going to happen, 
and to see how badly we're going to be affected. And we are literally, we're all sitting here just killing time until we find out what's going to happen. Um, but in that killing time time, I think we could be doing stuff because what normally goes up in price in a budget? Petrol, cigarettes, alcohol, they normally always get hammered. Now, I'm presuming they're going to get hammered again. What can I say? We're all right just now because of the electricity costs or the energy costs because we've got the allowances. But what happens if we don't get the allowances after, what is it, March they finish? Dehydrating would be a good thing to stock up more of because it takes less energy um, once we, we don't get the help. <coughs> <coughs> so, yeah, I definitely need to do more dehydrating. But I'm just thinking of looking at where where do we think they're going to put up the money? Now, I haven't actually looked, I have to say. I literally got this thought while I was standing here. Um, but we know the, the, the things that they mainly put up the taxes on. We know the interest rates are not going to come tumbling down anytime soon. So our mortgages are going to go up. And rents have gone up considerably. I read a thing today, and I mean, a lot of the rents have gone up like 80, 90%. Um, there was somebody in London saying the rent's gone up £300 a month. And she's like, what are we going to do? And because they're not working, um, I think she said one's part-time and one's disabled or something, but, you know, it's not two full-time working people. They're really going to struggle to add that on. But because of their life, they're going to really struggle to get a different flat anyway. And they're saying in London, I think in this article, it was there's seven people for every flat that's up for rent in London. And trust me, I'm pretty sure when they say every flat, they don't mean flat. They mean rooms and HMOs. Or what used to be a garage or what used to be a hallway, I think I saw someone trying to put out for rent. Um, but the landlords, if they've bought a whole lot of properties to rent out on the really low interest rates on mortgages, then... They're really going to struggle because if I remember rightly, when I looked at that, um, because we were looking as a business to maybe buy a property and do it up and either rent it out or sell it on. So I started watching all these videos on YouTube about how to become a property developer and a property magnet and stuff. And roughly, as far as I can understand, do not quote me on this because I am not the expert by any manner of means. But I think what they did was they bought their first property with a mortgage and say that the first property they bought for 100,000 and it's normally a fixer upper. So they fixed it up and they got maybe 50 grand of equity. So it was now worth 150. So then they would take out another mortgage with this first one as equity to buy the second one. And then they take out equity on the second one to buy the third one. And there's some people with an awful lot of properties. Now, an awful lot of properties going up however many percentage points on the mortgages. <coughs> Excuse me. That is going to be quite a hefty expense for them. And they're either going to have to sell the property or they're going to have to hike the rents. But we're already getting warned that the NHS pay rise is not going to be anywhere near what, the, what they're wanting. Um... And once that hits one place, then they're all going to go because what the, I mean, basically what the government's saying is they cannot afford for inflation to increase anymore. And if they increase wages, it will increase inflation. And what we all need to do is we need to wait until they sort it out and bring inflation down. Yeah. I think we'll need to donate more to the food banks because all these people who are waiting for this inflation level to come down, are really going to struggle. Um, you know, prices are going up. People's wages are not going up. So it's definitely, it's not going to be fun, I don't think. So, yeah, I'm just, again, I'm rambling again. Basically because I just need to know. I need to know what's happening on Thursday. I need to know so I can plan, so I can make tick lists, so I can get myself organised. I really, really don't like knowing stuff. I like to know stuff. 
So yes, I'm, I'm basically, I'm sitting here getting antsy, going, going to just tell us instead of saying, oh, everyone's going to have to pay higher taxes, everyone's got, just explain it to me. I need to know the answers. So yes. So that's me today. Monday night, I'm about to go and have a cup of tea, sort out my carrots and onions, which I think I'm probably going to put in the air fryer and I'll have with some leftovers um, that I have from the weekend. And that'll be my dinner for tonight. And then I will have a clear conscience in the waste category. I will have a clear conscience in the energy category. And I will be ready for tomorrow. So there you go. I hope you've had a lovely Monday and I will catch you later.